Hello, this is Justin Okrahor of Scatterwork, and I'm here to present how to decipher earned value management. It's a very useful technique, but the presentation of it tends to be rather complicated and is particularly useful if you have projects working for you or subcontractors and you want to see, are, are you getting value for money and are you on track? So just to introduce Scatterwork, we help managers achieve uh, their assignments by consulting and coaching and training. And the team is scattered over a number of different countries. And we have a number of skill sets, including engineering. Um, and uh, we have a number of doctorates and we speak a number of languages. So we're very, very well positioned to work on a virtual basis. We really do two main things. One of them is coaching and consulting. So coaching means actually working with people so that they do they can do the work that they're working on at present, get results from whatever is current. And training is background issues for individuals who then go out and support the, the implementation. But of course, for the quickest implementation, the coaching and uh, consulting uh, brings you straight to the results. Nevertheless, we operate under both of these headings um, as you can see from that chart there. Uh, there are various uh, sectors that we've been in over the years, and these are the main ones. And we've worked for lots of companies from uh, small and medium enterprises right up to blue chip companies. And our spread has been across the world, as you can see on one side of the map, it's North and South America, and at the other end, it's New Zealand. So just as a reminder, a project is something that delivers a thing or an item or a service or a change of state. And there are different words used for it in different uh, organizations and different sectors and so on. But you might hear the word program, engagement, initiative, scheme, and so on. And indeed, you may have some word which doesn't appear on that list. Here are some example projects. They're things that you do want, and when they're finished, they're finished. So if I take the second one, for example, here, establish an online enrollment module for students. So this could be in a, in a college environment. They don't want to have people on the telephone doing it and so on. And it's not working until you've got a system that works. And when it works, you stop the project and you hand it over to operations who then use it to enroll students. Or upgrade uh, cybersecurity. A company might decide that for whatever reason they need to do that. And instead of just saying, well, we'll do lots of bits and pieces and so on, they put a package together of things they're going to do and then uh, work out how to do them in a sensible way. And then when they're done, the project is closed. So what is earned value management? What are the benefits of it? There are some assumptions there. And then uh, I've given a couple of examples of the two um, indices that are most important, cost and scheduled performance. And then there's a graphic representation that you'll find, um, which may help you understand it. And then um, a reminder on how to remember the formula, if you happen to be using it for an exam. Of course, if you're using it for real life, you just look it up and use it. So earned value management is a single unified tracking tool um, so that you can see where a project has got to. Uh, there are lots of different things out there. There are critical path analysis and Gantt charts, and then um, there are iteration um, reviews, and there are um, burn down charts in the agile world and so on. And they, they, they're, they're all fine, but the question is sort of wh where have we got to? Hmm? And at a business level, what we're really interested in usually is you know, when do I get it and what's it going to cost me? And the methodology under that by which we achieve that, whether it's predictive or agile, is really of less interest to the business, provided they guess, get the best deal going. So what we do is we standardize tracking parameters for cost and schedule, if you like. And they're both called indices, cost performance index. And uh, index means one number divided by another. And uh, what we do is we compare what we've got for cost against what we expected for cost. And if you divide one by the other and they're the same, you get the number one, which says you're on track for cost. And uh, if the number is over one, it means you're getting good value. And if it's under one, say like 0 0.9, 0 0.8, then you're getting bad value. And then the interesting thing here is that we also use money 
uh, to estimate the schedule performance. For example, you may not have spent the money that you should have spent. And maybe the reason is because you're slow doing the project. So looking at the expenditure compared to the plan is one way of um, checking how you're doing on the schedule. So it's really interesting that we're using money that we're going to measure within the project um, to see uh, if we're on schedule. So we get two indices, both of them one number divided by the other. And uh, if, the, if the, the two items are the same value, we get one, which says we're okay. And if the number is greater than one, fine. And if it's less than one, it's not so good. Now it's very useful because that can be applied to any project or any sub project or any contractor you have working for you without them knowing you know, anything about this method. Now, earned value management assumes that you're dealing with value, but value is what you get when you sell something. If I've got a secondhand car or I've got um, maybe an old computer or you know any anything like that that I'm selling, I can think, well, it's worth so much, but or a house, for example. But actually, the value of it is the money that you get when you sell it. So to talk about earned value in a project is a bit misleading in the sense that you you don't really know what the value is because you can't sort of sell half the project. I mean, there are situations where a house is half built and the builder goes bankrupt, and then uh, you try and get another builder and so on. But that's rare. So normally what happens is you don't really know what the value is. So there's a the, what they do in earned value management is to say, look, um, I tell you what, let's let's take as an indication of value the budget for the work which has been, actually been done. Nothing to do with the cost, how much money we actually gave out. It's just saying, let's pull out of the archive the original budget for the work that seems to have been done. And let's call that value. So that's an important assumption. So I've got an example here on cost. I'm building a hundred meter fence around my garden and 50% of it has been completed. And my budget is a thousand euro. And the contractor comes to me on a Friday evening and says, I want please 750 um, euro. And I say, well, that's that's out of step with you know what you've done. And he says, yes, yeah, yeah, but I'm I'm coming back on Monday and it's nearly done and it's the weekend and da da da. So if I agree and I pay him that money, what I've done is I've given him seven hundred and fifty percent, seventy five percent, in other words, of the budget. But I've only got fifty percent of the value. So looking at this index here, I take earned value which is represented by the budget that would have been there for the work that has actually been done, it's 50%. And we divide that by 50% of the total of the thousand. Huh? And then we divide that by the actual cost. And the actual cost here would be 75% of the total. And you get a number 0.67. So we're getting bad value for money because the value, we're giving out 750, but we're only getting 500 value. Now, just suppose the contractor doesn't come back again and leaves the job, then I've only got 25% of the money left, but I've got 50% of the work. So if I go out and look for a new contractor, they will tell me, well, I'm sorry, I can't do it for that money. So we get into a really bad situation. So the trick is not to give out money or to, to spend money or to allocate money um, or to commit money, except that it matches the work that's been done. OK, let's look at schedule now. Now, supposing I'm building this fence and I plan to do it over five weekends. So I'm going to five Saturdays, if you like. And after three weekends, I would expect three fifths of it to be done. But three fifths of 100 meters is 60 meters. Three, me three fifths is, is six tenths or 60 percent. So 60 meters. Hmm? So but actually, I've only done 50. So what does that tell us? Well, I look at the earned value, which is based on the 50. And I look at the um, the value that I should have done. This is how much I should have done. This is not what money I've spent. It's what I should have done. I divide one by the other. And I get a number which is under one. So what that says to me is that on the schedule, we're behind. We had planned to do 60% by the first three weeks. But actually, we've only done 50. So that says we're behind. But we're using money to tell us that. 
Okay, so here are the three parameters. Earned value is this one that I spoke about at the beginning, and it's represented by the original budget for the work which has actually been done. Now, huh? the planned value is how much money should have been given out by this stage of the project, and the actual cost is how much money we've actually given out, um, for including, for example, replacements if, if material goes missing or gets damaged or anything like that. Now, here's a graphic. Um, this long curve in the middle is usually called the S-curve, um, and it is planned value. So what's happening here is that um, if this is the way you plan to spend your money, this is illustrative, obviously. But the point is that it can't go down. When you've spent money, you can't unspend it or get your money back. So the curve can go up or it can be flat, but it can't go down. So that's why it's always represented as an S. So let's just have a look. Um, we do the, the plan value before we start. And then um, every week, for example, in this example, I would go out and I'd say, well, what is the actual cost? I'd look at my bank balances. And then I would look at the earned value. I would look at the fence and say how much of that has been done. And the earned value here is higher than the planned value. So the value of what's done on this example is higher than the planned value. So this number is going to be greater than one. So that says we're going fast. Well, I mean, that's true, you can see, because we actually got this value achieved here instead of at this time here. So we, we're ahead of schedule. We can see that from the money. Earned value divided by actual cost. In this case, there's a very big difference. And the earned value is much bigger. So we're getting really good value for money. Maybe we, we negotiated good rate on materials or we're, we're able to work fast or something like that, that that made it easier to do. So how do we remember the formula? Well, earned value, EV is always the first one. And then we start with variances, and a variance is one number minus the other. So the cost variance is earned value minus, mm, well, we've only got three parameters, so it must be the cost one. Yeah. And then the schedule variance is the other one. So it's earned value, because that's always the first parameter, minus, well, there are only three parameters, and the only one left is PV. And then we convert them to indices by making them a divide instead of minus. Now, the way we can do that, we can add two dots above and below the line here. And what was a minus sign actually becomes a divide sign. And these are the formulae. And they're really good because the number should be one for both of them. So if I'm a, a manager of, shall we say, I've got a contractor working for me, and I can get these three numbers out of them somehow, I do the two divisions, and then I can say, aha, uh -huh, you know, we're getting good money, value for money, um, but we're behind time, or, you know, or whatever combination applies. But the cost and schedule are separate. So that's it. If you have any queries on that, feel free to contact me, and I'll be happy to, to talk to you, or indeed on any other project issues. Thanks very much.